Good morning. It's another brilliant day in Namibia. And to ensure that you get notified of our future adventures, please remember to like, subscribe and hit that bell icon and you'll get notified. Thank you very much to our patrons. It's your support that makes these videos possible. We camped at a lovely campsite and we have had a joy to have neighbors. A bit noisy. It was great to see these um, sociable weaver nest right next to our trusty Fudu. Um, lovely to see the day as they slept a bit later than us because we got up very early and it's quite cold. As you can see it's about 9.30 and it's still very very cold. Um, my phone says it's about 6 degrees and to see how they start their day, start building their nest, fight about twigs and um, they're quite tame here because they're quite used to people um, eating from our table looking for scraps around the car and the amazing way they can hover and find their nest and keep building their nest. Namibia is one of the few places where you still find these type of special campsites and just time to appreciate the wonders of nature. The campsite was called Mesorus's Fossils and it was a wonderful place to watch the sun rise with the golden light hitting all the quiver trees scattered in the hills around the campsite. One of the best lures with a view at the Fish River Canyon in Namibia. Fantastic place. Our next stop was the Fish River Canyon to watch the day end and the golden sunset disappear over the brilliant landscape. Namibia kept surprising us with its varied bird life. Even in the dry arid landscape, we also started to get to know the wind in Namibia. It was a nice sunny day until like two minutes ago. And suddenly the wind is howling and it's dust and clouds. Connecting with the Orange River at Ozenkur, we left the boring tarmac road behind and hit the interesting gravel road. And keeping the Orange River to the south, we slowly headed west again towards the sea. With the Richtersveld National Park crossing the borders of South Africa and Namibia, it was interesting to see what the northern side of the park had to offer. It was a lot less developed, but it was fascinating for us to spend three days camping all around along the Orange River and seeing what the bird life it has to offer. And much too soon we got closer to the sea and spent our last ev evening at this great camping spot right next to the water with a lot of bird life to keep us busy through the day. We've made it to the sea. As you can see it's very windy so we must be back at the sea. We're at our Uraniamund Beach. It's a bit chilly. But yes, um, just uh, about a month ago, month and a half ago, we were right across the border over the Orange River. And we said we'll see you on this side. So we're seeing you on this side. If you haven't watched the video and saw how we got stuck in the desert, I will link it above. What do you think, honey? Happy to be back at the sea. The waves scene. are big, but the wind is cold. <laughs> So we'll see if we can um, head up along the coast. We've heard some rumors that it's still blocked, although I, I thought it was unrestricted, but the little shiny stones is here, so we may not be able to, which will mean we will have to do a loop around to get, get back to the sea at Luderitz. And then we will we'll take you along on the road and see how our adventure continues in a movie. So we snooped around Urania Munt to try and see if we could follow the coast north towards Ludritz, but everywhere we went we got blocked by the mining activity and what is called the Sperrgebiet. So very few towns 
where you're in the middle of a town and you see an oryx peacefully grazing next to the road. So we're headed north in a wide inland loop, enjoying Namibia's great gravel roads. And reason number 7495 to love Namibia is that you have these very nice places to stop next to the road and eat and they clean. Clean up junkies like us, there's nothing to clean up, which is a, a welcome change to some of the other countries. Thanks Namibia, you're great. Keep on doing what you're doing. We're visiting the wild horses of the Kharup between us and Lourdes. These horses were domesticated once and was left by the German army in the second in, in the First World War. And they've now become wild and there's a shelter here and some water. They look quite happy without human interference. And this morning we're visiting Kulmans Kop just outside Lourdes. It used to be a mining town where you could walk and pick up diamonds. But now it's a ghost town. Karin's gonna go for a tour because it's very sandy. I'm gonna um, be cold. We were very proud of ourselves to be able to get up so early this morning to make it here. To get some nice sunlight to get the best pictures possible. Hi. Are you ready to go? Yes, I'm ready to go. Kolman's Kop was named after Mr. Kolman who got stuck with his ox wagon in that area and the town developed in 1908 when diamonds was discovered and it brought diamond seekers and adventurers from all over the world. The town developed at a rapid pace and within a few years it was one of the richest towns in Africa and one of the richest towns in the world. It had electric power in 1911, luxury stone houses, a casino, a school, a hospital, an ice factory and even a theatre, a ballroom, a sports hall and a bowling alley. Visiting the town is like going into a time capsule. Some of the buildings has been restored since I visited the previous time, many many years ago. After Kormans Kop, we visited Luderitz, a harbour town with its German architecture that's still inhabited today. But then it was time to head further north, so please remember to come back next time as we visit Sesrim and Sosusfle before we pop in to Walfus Bay to visit some friends and then hit the coast again as we follow the skeleton coast as far north as we can. Remember to like, subscribe and hit that bell icon and you'll get notified. Thank you very much to our patrons. It's your support that makes these videos possible.